Games involving the discovery of the new world seem to be making a bit of a comeback these days. We've seen several releases of this kind within the last year, and Interactive Magic is extending the trend with exploration. One of the first strategy sims I ever played was a game called Seven Cities of Gold on my Commodore 64 years ago, and it still remains one of my all-time favorites. It was a sim about the discovery of the new world, so I was very interested when Exploration was released. And what do you think of Exploration now that you've played it? Well, it has some really good features and some features that aren't quite so good. To tell you the truth, it wasn't really what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more of a simulation, but Exploration is really strategy-oriented and plays a lot like a board game. Exploration is a game of world discovery and conquest. The object is to discover land, establish colonies and ports, build plantations and mining operations, and make lots and lots of money. As a player, you can choose one of five historical characters like Christopher Columbus or James Cook. If you wish, you can play yourself, but all that involves is simply choosing one of these characters and substituting your own name. If you choose a character with a home port of Spain or Portugal, you begin the game with a slightly better ship, since these countries historically had an advantage in shipbuilding. And while you're choosing characters, you can also choose whether you want to play on a map of the real world or have the computer generate a random map. Once you choose a map and the number of players, you begin the actual game in your home port with one ship and an allotment of money. The game is played in turns, with each turn representing one year. A game played from beginning to end would take 300 years, ending in 1789, which was what? Jack? The year Cheers debuted? No. Bob? The number of times It's a Wonderful Life will be on TV this December? Uh, that's not what we're looking for. Jerry. Uh, the average number of swear words uttered after buying Phantasmagoria? No, sorry. 1789 is the year of the French Revolution. A player can retire earlier if they want, but in 1789, all players are forced to retire. Which I think stinks. An option should be included to play longer, indefinitely if we want. It would have been nice, but as mentioned before, exploration plays like a board game, not a sim. So there are very definite goals and ending points for the game. But there isn't any one goal to be achieved in exploration. When a player's game is over, they're evaluated in 15 different categories. Depending on how a player rates in all categories, they are given a final rating, which can be anywhere between pauper and royal advisor. The port is where you begin the founding of your empire. This is where the most important game functions take place. The port screen is a three-screen wide picture of an old ship port. The players scroll left and right to access the different buildings which represent different game functions. The office, shipyard, pub, banker, trader, church, political center, and the historian can be found in every port regardless of the country, although the port itself looks different. If you want to go to the bank, you just click on the bank building. If you want to go to the trader, you click on the trader's store. This is a nice interface which works very well. All transactions and decisions are made with the mouse, so it's very simple to accomplish things in port. Once you get your ship outfitted with the men and supplies you need for a voyage, you set off to discover the new world. As a turn-based game, each ship has a certain number of spaces that it can sail during a single turn. As ship technology increases, the number of spaces a ship can travel will increase. The only problem is that it doesn't matter how much cargo you're carrying on board, the distance your ship can travel always stays the same. At the beginning of the game, the only thing that shows on your map is your home country and port. All else is black. As you sail into unknown regions, these areas are permanently added to your map. You basically pick a direction to sail in and go until you run into land. Most land masses have natives living on them, their towns being represented by teepees. When you see a teepee, you have to launch a land expedition in order to negotiate with them. Trinkets, which are bought at port, are used in dealing with each native town. Negotiating is nothing but giving the chief the number of trinkets that he wants. If you have enough trinkets on hand, the chief accepts your trade, and his town becomes a colony for your country. If you don't have enough trinkets, you can either go back to port and buy some, or you can fight the natives. Fighting results in deaths on both sides, so even if you win, there are a lot fewer people in your colony than there would have been if you traded. One huge problem I had with this game is the lack of options when dealing with Incan cities. Real quick, the Incas were... Yes, Jack? They were those guys that worked in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Nope, sorry. Bob. They were a race of people who put the color in comic book drawings? Oh, no. Jerry. Are you sure they weren't the guys that worked for Willy Wonka? Oh, we're sure. The Incas were the race of natives that had a great empire of their own in the New World. When an Incan city is discovered, you'd think you'd have the option to trade with them just like any other city, right? 
Well, in exploration, you have no other option than to fight the Incas for their city. That stinks. Why'd they do it like that? The reasoning behind this horrible feature is that historically, the discoverers always fought the Incas for their land. So that's what you, the player, are limited to doing. That's awful. There should at least be a game option of trading with the Incas. I mean, this is a PC game where there are usually lots of game options available. The designers shouldn't have stuck to the history books quite so strictly, and they should have given us the ability to do what we wanted. It feels more like a political statement than a gaming choice. Once a colony is established, the player has a variety of options open to him. Cotton, tobacco, and sugar plantations can be built, or mining operations for ore, silver, and gold can be established. There are certain geographic and population attributes that affect where you want to build. Plantations require water and 100 colonists to operate most efficiently, while mines require mountains and 250 colonists for best results. These businesses provide a steady source of income for your country since all you have to do is pick up the products and sail back to a port where they can be sold. Other items can be built such as warehouses for product storage and churches which keep you from becoming excommunicated. When a town's population becomes big enough, it can be upgraded to a fort or a port. The game goes on like this turn after turn, colonizing, building, selling what's produced, and buying more ships. The tough part is when the other players start to get into your territory. Wars always break out, which usually means the loss of ships and territory. It is possible to declare peace with another country, but that costs money and is usually just a stalling technique in order to rebuild forces. The computer is actually a pretty good opponent, but for the ultimate experience, exploration can be played with up to four human players. But keep in mind that this is a turn-based game. When lots of players get involved, the game can move very slowly. The computer makes moves in almost no time at all, but humans have to check prices, look at the map, make complicated decisions, and that slows the game down quite a bit. The graphics aren't that impressive, but they aren't bad at all. The animations were probably the worst part of the game. Yeah, the same animation pops up every time an event like a fire happens. It really detracted from the game. While the animations were choppy, the graphics weren't so bad, but after you see the exact same thing for the same event, it gets old quick. But the rest of the graphics were decent. You don't need the greatest graphics in the world to still have a good strategy game. And that's exactly what exploration is, a good strategy game. If you ever played Master of Orion, you already have a good feel for this game. While it's not exactly on the same level as Orion, they play a lot alike. Once you get into it, you'll find yourself putting off a lot of other things, telling yourself that you want just one more turn. It's a fun, addictive game, even with its flaws.